the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Niners and the Steelers next on Madden NFL 24. Uh, it is a perfect Sunday afternoon, and in the Steel City, those are reserved for one thing, football, as our coverage of the NFL brings us to Acrisure Stadium in Pittsburgh. Today, boy, what a matchup. Two NFL franchises with so much history, so much tradition, getting set to do battle here, as it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis, thrilled to be back with you. Charles, today is the day, September 7th, 2023. Should be a national holiday, in my view. 206 days since the Chiefs beat the Eagles in Super Bowl 57. The NFL is back. The opening Thursday night game happening tonight. Let's talk big picture. What kind of chances do you give the Chiefs and the Eagles of repeating as conference champions? First of all, I'm with you. It should be a national holiday. I like where your head is on that one. Let's talk about the Chiefs. They've just dominated the AFC West. I give them an excellent chance of getting back to the conference championship game and maybe beyond. For the Eagles, a little more problematic. There hasn't been a repeat champion in the NFC East since the Eagles did it in 2003, 2004. So their road appears to be a little bit tougher. Two teams that have combined to win 11 Super Bowl titles, the Steelers and the Niners are underway. Fielded just outside the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. The Steelers offense set for their first possession here and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second year man Charles from Pitt. Pickett didn't quite lead Pittsburgh to the promised land in his first season as the hometown kid and franchise quarterback, but he did impress once he got on the field. Winning seven games helped keep the vaunted streak of now losing seasons alive in the Steel City. Now the third-year man, Najee Harris. He's able to force his way through one man, but he can muster only about a yard on the play. Second down. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Looking to throw, pick it. Man open is Robinson. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. And now we're going to get a stoppage as, yeah, that looks like Jackson who's shaken up. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. This one hauled in, and again, it's Robinson. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. It's another first down as they look his way again, this time 19 yards. That early game script that they drew up is working pretty well here on this first drive. Already in field goal range, Charles knocking on the door of the red zone. You know, Brandon, when we met with the coaching staff, they kind of predicted that they would come out firing like this. I think you and I were a little skeptical that it'd be this easy, but they certainly knew what they were doing in scouting, in preparation, and understanding what their team was capable of. And he's brought down after a very nice game. A well-executed 22-yard game. Boy, no problems getting down the field here on this opening drive. They've looked really sharp in the early going, and they've come up with some big plays already. Here's another that's going to set up first and goal. Harris. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Yes, 
From back at the four, here's second and goal. Again, it's Harris. And good work there defensively as they're able to keep him out of the end zone. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? They'll try and run with Harris. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A touchdown run there from a yard out. And the Steelers get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Well, now to kick it away after the touchdown. And a decent return out to the 27 yard line. With the Niners' offense set to go to work, and it's last year's revelation Brock Purdy who leads them out in season number two from Iowa State. There weren't many bigger stories last season than Purdy who's officially the most famous Mr. Relevant of all time. Won each of his first five starts and almost guided his team to a Super Bowl. He's really forced the team to reevaluate his plans at quarterback because he looks like the real deal. Purdy gonna lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 27. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Throws the out loud and completes it to Samuel. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. So just three yards on the completion there. And that's going to bring up second down. Here's the pro bowler, Christian McCaffrey. And he'll fight for a couple as the tackle is made at about the 32. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, are usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roll them and hit. And he is going to have a Niners first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. Pass taken in by his 
this big tight end. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner. But to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And trying to get it to Samuel, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. And the Steelers are going to take over here up near the 40. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. Here's Pickett. second down and I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game he's had his way so far but on that last one that worked quite well for the defense an incomplete pass on first down that leads to a second and ten pick it back to throw and that one too wide and incomplete well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now pick it. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. So on fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. Ray Ray McLeod deep here for the Niners. This is taken at the 15. It'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. And the Niners will go on offense first and ten. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes, get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Short completion, just four yards, and that'll bring up second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top. And a Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. They need 18 yards here on third down. Purdy looking to throw. And that is incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get on track in this one. On 
fourth down, the Niners trot out Mitch Wisnowski to punt the football. And back deep, Gunnar Olszewski. A 47-yard punt, maybe a couple on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. They turn to Harris to begin the drive. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. And that's caught inside the 30. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. And even 40 yards. How about this first quarter for them throwing the football? This defense has zero answers for what they've seen so far with the ball in the air. I'm not sure how they're going to change things around. But offensively, I keep attacking. I keep throwing the football until they make me change. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Pick it. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well, and every now and then, they don't come down with the football. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Back to throw, pick it. And he's gonna go down. He's sacked back in the 24. Javon Hargrave, the D tackle, getting the sack. They've gobbled up over 30 yards of turf so far, but a sack knocks them backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Looking sideline, and he's going to have his man as he was able to walk the tightrope there for the completion. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. I know they don't like to hear it when they get to a certain age, but then you have to start to use your, your skills, your wiles, right, your mind to beat guys to the football, and getting your toes tapped in bounds definitely qualifies as that, doesn't yeah, it? The veteran showing he still has the agility. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. So after the made field goal, 10-0 here early as the kick's away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Second down and four. Out of the gun, Purdy. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. 
So many things have to go right for any passing ball to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Back to throw, Purdy. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 and a first down. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. Here's Purdy on first and 10. This one caught by Kittle. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Purdy sets up to throw again. And his throw is incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big time spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. On second down, McCaffrey. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially nothing on that one, no gain, so they're left with still 10 to go on third down. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. Offensively lucky there, able to keep the football, but now fourth down, so they'll have to boot him away. I do think, though, they're going to look at this as a positive. One, they recovered the fumble, so they retained possession. But two, being able to punt it changes field position for them. Imagine if that turnover takes place there. Now your defense has to go onto the field and try and hold. Instead, they get a little breathing room. And that is no good. I oh, hit it well from distance, but he couldn't work it back in. And they will not cut into that 10-point lead. Yeah, 55 yards is anything but a gimme. you got to really concentrate on your leg swing and proper technique. This time, though, he's unable to convert. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Harris. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Now a pass hauled in downfield. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A first down there on a pickup of 25. Ten nothing to score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. Pickett's throw complete to Flyer Muth. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 12 more yards there and another first down. 
I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Najee Harris with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Steelers are able to extend their lead. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that makes our score 17-0. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. The 49ers ready to set up shop again offensively. They're down 17-0, really needing to find that offensive spark on this drive as they have it with a first and 10. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. That's to about the 28. Second down coming up. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Here's Purdy. But it took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up the third down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. The Niners on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and seven. Purdy now to throw off the play action. Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. Picked up by Minka Fitzpatrick. And the Steelers are going to have the football here at their own 35-yard line. Partner, I think this will want to ride very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. First and 10, here's Pickett. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. Pickett will look to throw it here. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there's no way that ball was going to be caught. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Looking to throw. Pick it. That is caught. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. 
Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Second down and six now. Looking to throw. Pick it. Johnson's got it complete. And Johnson going to have a Steelers first down as he'll be brought down just outside the red zone. Mark him at the 21. Well, Pickett finding Johnson there. First down, Steelers. Harris running straight ahead. Oh, fine work there as he gets this thing down to the 11-yard line. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. Throw left side complete. That's Robinson. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it'll be second down. to throw pick it to the end zone but it's incomplete a good job in coverage there they took away his top read on the play so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back who scored on their last possession but the coverage held it goes incomplete they head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down operating from the gun pick it to the goal line but it's incomplete. Fourth down now as San Fran's defense was strong in coverage. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So the defense able to force the interception and the offense working their way into field goal range and able to get three out of it. Yeah, and give them credit for that. They took the ball, maneuvered it downfield, and while they couldn't get exactly what they wanted, which was a touchdown, they did get three points out of it. So they paid off what the defense gave them. Both sides would be thrilled with that. the successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Well, still early in this one, Charles, but the last time this offense was out there, they threw their first interception of the ball game, so trying to avoid repeating that mistake here on this drive. And to put a positive spin on it, at least it happened in the first half and not in a close game in the fourth quarter. But you're absolutely right, partner. One of the last things this offensive quarterback wants to witness again in this game. Kind of an obvious question, Charles, but anything you try to avoid after your first pick or you say it's one interception, we're still in the first half, I'm going to do the same thing. 
I think you want to avoid playing scared, you know, and put it into the mind of the quarterback that you've lost confidence in him. Make sure you get some throws that he's going to be able to complete, make him feel good about himself, and continue to run your offense. Second and six. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Back-to-back four-yard runs. Now look, hey, if they just do that all the way downfield, ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. They go play action here, Purdy. He's got his target. That's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Well, they only needed a small gain on third down. They end up getting over 30 yards. Ah, so often when we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there, that shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. A throwing here, Purdy. Again, he'll find Samuel for the completion. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll make it second down. McCaffrey running up the middle. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On third down, here's Purdy. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game. So you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. And his kick is indeed good. And that will move the deficit from 20 down to 17. So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard but it's tough to simulate game speed in practice and that often runs you into a penalty. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and 10. Looking to throw, pick it. And that's gonna be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one, it's second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hope it didn't come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. 
The offense on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and 10. Here's Pickett. Escaping the pressure right. And he is stopped just short on third down. Got nine yards, but needed 10. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Out on the field now, here come the 49ers. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. His throw incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Purdy from the gun. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They're giving him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Purdy with it on third and long. He's got his man, Jennings. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 23 yards, the final tally. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A give running left, it's McCaffrey. A little juke. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 46 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired, I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run, who knows? They work now on second and nine. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Well, this defense is certainly organized and playing off of each other because the rush is providing pressure and the coverage is forcing incompletions and capitalizing on mistakes. When you get every level on defense hitting it once, you get first half scores just like this one. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. Make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. This is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. T.J. Watt causing the disruption. He gets the sack. Well, surprise, surprise. First and goal of the one. No quarterback sneak. No running play. They decide to throw for it, but the pressure got to them quickly and put the quarterback down. A 
A second down throw for Purdy. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, this is a half where not just the coverage, but the entire defense is setting the tone in this game. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now Purdy. Touchdown 49ers. Debo Samuel from eight yards out. And the 49ers are able to cut into that deficit. Obviously, Brandon, they couldn't get it all back with just one score. But that touchdown chips into the lead. And now it makes the comeback a little bit more manageable. Jake Moody now for the point after. It's up, it's good. That'll make the score line 20 to 10. A 10 play drive that time. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. Escapes the defender. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. Still more than a minute to go, so there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well. So that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. To the air on first down with Pickett. Setting up the screen, Harris. A very good move but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, backdoored them, and that time worked well for a solid game. Second down, here's Pickett. That's going to be caught by Pickett. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. On first and 10, it's Pickett. Finding Pickens for another catch. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Dialing up another pass here. Pick it. And the Niners get there and bring him down. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Pick it back to throw. A short one there to fire you. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half.
So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We got a fine first half out of the former Alabama man, Najee Harris. He chipped in a couple of touchdown runs as he was running with determination right from the word go. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. the football and trailing on the scoreboard as we get back underway on EA Sports. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. The 49er offense set to go to begin quarter number three. And they're on the short end of the scoreboard here. Charles, what adjustments, if any, do you think they need to make for the second half? We're paraphrasing the gold medal hockey winning coach Herb Brooks. I just say you continue to play your game. Throw the ball. They had success doing it in the first half. So make sure you keep getting the ball to your playmakers a little bit more to the perimeter, perhaps. But above all, play your game. Now on first down, it's Purdy. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. It'll go down as a gain of six. And it's second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 61 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. That one definitely helps as they try to push the ball down the field here, trailing early in the third quarter. And even though they're trailing, not abandoning the running game. People may call it an adjustment. I think it's just much more sticking to what works for you and continuing to have faith in it. And the running game is starting to pay off. Purdy's throw pulled in by Kittle. So the completion good for six yards. And that will bring up second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. This second and four. Purdy. Open man is Samuel, complete. And Debo going to have a Niners first down as a tackle made at the 42. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. Here now, second and four. This is Samuel. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there. Now it'll be third down. Back to throw, Purdy. Connects with Kittle underneath. And a great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. It's a pickup of six. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. 
But since they did, I guess the point is moved. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. On first down, this is McCaffrey. The tackle by Cole Holcomb. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Purdy now on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Purdy. Oh, it's intercepted. A drive killer there. Picked off by Cole Holcomb. And the Steelers are in great shape here as they take over at their 46-yard line. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and ten. So good field position for the Steelers as they come up first and ten at their own 46. They'll start the drive with Harris. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. But they certainly got deaded with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. Now a second and six. They run again with Harris. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. 49 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. This is Harris on the draw. Fred Warner, the all-pro linebacker there on the stop. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Here's a second and five. They hand this off to Harris and trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Looking to throw, pick it. And that is incomplete coverage was awfully tight there on third down they actually closed off all the passing lanes forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down so now on comes the field goal unit and wow this is no ordinary try here this officially a 55 yard attempt and he missed it it's no good and the lead will hold it 10 so another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And three interceptions in this game, and I would have to think, I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. 
No, and what's interesting is what do the coaches decide to do now? Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. Throwing on first down, but this one lines up to be incomplete. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Purdy looking to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. Well, the terrible towels in full force now as the Steelers get set to defend this third and long. The throwing here, Purdy. And they'll get this across the midfield stripe, but still winding up short of the first down. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. That looked great when he first took off because, in my mind, there was room to run, and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect them to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Meanwhile, Pickett slowly in the hands of Pickens. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. He's going to look deep down the field, and this one is incomplete. They were maybe hoping for a little bit of a back shoulder fade there, and that's a play that's been in vogue the last few years in all aspects of football but they couldn't get the hook up there. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Pick it. And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. And that could have been the lifeline they needed. This is a play that could have been made. Instead, it's just going to fall incomplete. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now pick it. And this pass broken up. Well, the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag, punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. And the drive starts with a completion left side. 
call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. And yeah, McCaffrey going to pick up a Niners first down as he's got it up to the 28-yard line. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. Back to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. Offense looked a little bit discouraged after that play, shaking their heads a bit, looking at each other. I think they thought they'd get a lot more out of that call. Sometimes you do get the running lane you want, and other times, the defensive front, they just break up the play before it can get going. Throwing on second down, it's Purdy. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And Kittle going to have a 49ers first down as he'll be brought down at the 38-yard line. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. This is McCaffrey on the give. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 90 yards now for McCaffrey. It's a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From a couple of yards beyond midfield, here's second and eight. Here's Purdy. A hit as he throws there incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Now the terrible towels in full force now as the Steelers get set to defend this third and long. Purdy with it on third and long. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to him. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on to kick it away. made just outside the 15-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game, but why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs. At their own 17-yard line, Harris will start to drive out. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field. you got to make the right diagnosis. Here he correctly sends his run and shoots through to make the play in the backfield. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports.
Back now in Pittsburgh. It's Steeler football, and they have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. Harris going to get it again on second down. A gain of a yard gets them back where they started. Now it's third and ten. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And now this is scooped up by the 49. And he will bring this one back. It's a fumble return for the 49er touchdown. This defense, Charles, they needed some type of a spark to help get them back in this game. I think they just got their spark. No doubt about it. And you know that's all they discussed. How can we get ourselves moving again? How can we get our team going? This definitely qualifies. Extra point try now for Moody. It's up and good, and the lead's now down to three at 20 to 17. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Taking it at about the one. And he returns this to the 22. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and 10 here. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. It's a six yard gain on the ground and that'll make it second and four. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're gonna continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal? that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball. Pickett looking to throw on second down. A short one there to Fryermuth. And Fryermuth going to have a Steelers first down as the tackle made up near the 35. Seven yards there at a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. On the give, this is Harris. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Another six-yard carry, same as last play. First down. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Pickett's throw complete to Fryermuth. 
So he stopped for no gain, and it'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance and guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to, and if you're in full down territory, that really opens things up for you. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Well, the 49ers settling in for their next drive. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. From the 22, here's second and eight. They'll give it up to McCaffrey. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, he'll take that every single time. Third and two. Now Purdy. He'll get this underneath to McCaffrey. And he is going to have a Niners first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. On first down, Purdy. That's going to be caught by Samuel. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Ball on the 36 now. Here's a second down and four. Here's Samuel. Shoves him aside. And he goes out right around the 39. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third down, it's Purdy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a 49ers first down, and comfortably so as he gets five there on third and a yard. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. They'll bring the tight end in motion right here. 
Another run with McCaffrey on second down. And he'll get it down here to the 43. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Now Samuel. Give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Now second and five. McCaffrey running up the middle. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. A potential field goal if you're thinking about that. Almost 55 yards from here as they try to get closer on third down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. But we knew this had the potential to be a tight game, but with less than three minutes to play, couldn't be any tighter. We're all tied. All locked up, right? And this next drive is going to tell us everything we need to know about this game because I want to see how they come out with the football. Are they going to be aggressive and attack downfield? You still got the two-minute warning to come up? Or are they going to be conservative and try and hold on and maybe just get to overtime? This crowd, boy, in a state of shock. What was once safely in hand is now a tie game as the kick is away here. This fielded right at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And the Steelers set to take the field. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 23. Pickett, he'll look to throw it. Now a short pass pulled in by Washington. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Here comes second down and five. Pickett sets up play action. Finding Harris over the middle. And Najee going to have the Steelers first down as he'll get this up past the 35-yard line. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw is made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. Pick it to throw. And that's caught inside the 30. And he's brought down after a very nice game. What a call right there. That is so well executed offensively. A massive play in this game. And now all of a sudden, they are in field goal range. And with a chance to walk out of here winners.
Here's first and ten. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They'll come up now on second down. Again, it's Harris on second down. And some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as it comes with a minute four left to go in the game. They'll come up first and ten here. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And strong running there as he's inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line. Here comes second down. On second down, this is Harris. And that's a touchdown as they broken our tie here in the final minute of the fourth. Well, any thoughts about overtime? have ended at this juncture. That touchdown puts them up six. I would imagine they'll kick the extra point now and rely on their defense. Yeah, rely on their defense. So a little bit of time left on the clock here in the fourth, but they got to feel good now. Boswell good with the extra point, and they will take a seven-point lead. Touchdown. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So Purdy and the Niners down 27-20. A little over 50 seconds remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. T.J. Watt in there to take him down and the clock will roll. And it has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Well, that play was certainly a little bit different because on the previous play, he was sacked. This time, protection a lot better. Had time to survey the field and still couldn't find an open receiver. This crowd turning up the decibel level. It's third and long. Here's Purdy. and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up 
decent yardage. Well, it took us until the final play chart to officially decide a winner, although on that last play they were so backed up it would have taken a miracle and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. In this case, though, it didn't happen. Perhaps next time.